Hmm. And we're on. Okay, guys. Welcome to another uh, tier list. And uh, this is a good tier list. It is all the Arkham villains ranked. Figure I should make a tier list now because if you see my comments, I've recently said that LEGO Customs could return. Which is true, they can actually return because if you see the process, live streams have fully been processed and are now up on my stream, or up on my channel. So, this means there will be some changes, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, there might be some changes. And uh, those changes are, of course, um, so Lego Customs may take more. Yeah, thank you, Air Freshener. Lego Customs may take more time to. Yes, more take more time to come out, in the process stage. So you'll have to wait for them a bit longer to be uploaded. Maybe a day or so, depending on how it works. Again, I'm not sure how. All it tells me is that the processing does work, but it takes longer than the average day, I think. But maybe it all depends on what video is. I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. Again, I'm not. In, I'm not really in control of how long the processing, the processing process, uh, the processing takes. So we'll have to see. But it does through it. It does go through in the end. So there is that. Um. So looking at these, we've got deadly extreme danger. What? Deadly, extreme danger, kind of dangerous, regular villain, waste of space. <laughs> Alright, so this is an interesting tier list. And these are all the Arkham villains, and I have played all the Arkham games. So, first up is Bane, who is one of the bigger villains and the more important players in the Arkham franchise, considering the whole Titan thing. You know, the, the whole game kind of revolt. Basically, the old trilogy basically kind of connects to the Titan if you think about the first game. Second game to do with the Joker. Third game because it caused the Joker's death. So you know. But as the character himself, his origin self was awesome, but I feel like his uh his uh Arkham Asylum and City downplayed him a bit. So Would you be in extreme danger with Bane? I would say kind of dangerous, not extreme danger. And that's only because you're not facing his origin self anymore. You're facing his present day self, which is the dumb Bane who is not the smartest kind of characters anymore. Next up is Deadshot, and Arkham City Deadshot is like the present day de Deadshot. But there really isn't much difference between the past, the past Deadshot and the present one. So, but he is very good good at getting the drop on you. So I think he's a dangerous villain, but he's not dangerous as well. I don't think he's more dangerous than present day Bane actually, because present day Bane is kind of a idiot think about it. Um Black Mask gets shafted, so you i I'm literally putting him waste of space category because he does get wasted in the Arkham Arkham verse. Deathstroke well he does get wasted in Arkham Knight, but in Arkham Origins and Arkham Knight still, even though he makes a f gets w wasted in the Arkham Knight boss fight, and you know in the Deathstroke boss fight of Arkham Knight with the tanks, he still retains his character. So I would put as extreme dangerous. Um, would I? S I should put him as a deadly, in deadly though, because he is like the deadly. Um, um, you know, the deadliest assassin. I think he kinda deserves the deadliest, but you know, if you face Deathstroke, you should be in immediate danger or extreme dangerous or deadly. I think he's the best, since he's like the best assassin type character, we'll go with the deadliest, but I don't think he's the best, but I think he's capable of being that. Even though Arkham Knight kind of weakened him, it didn't really change his character's motives. Next up is Solomon Grundy, and he didn't get much to do apart from that one thing with the penguin. And there is a reference to him on Arkham Knight, so... But since he's got that... Immortality thing, kind of... Oh, I would say extreme danger, because you never know how many times you need to fight this guy. You never know. Because he could be dead, but he is Solomon Grundy. 
He's a character that can be resurrected and stuff. Harley Quinn, not, um, I wouldn't say kind of dangerous, but regular villain material for the Arkham Birds. Um, next up is Hugo Strange. I wouldn't say he's a waste of space. I would say he's a regular villain. Um, he's better than, um, he's more dangerous than Harley Quinn, though. Uh, Hush kind of gets wasted in the Arkham games, but there's a lot of potential. But I would say he's kind of dangerous to a certain extent, but not as dangerous as other villains. So I'll put him up there. Next up is the Clown Prince of Crime, Mr. J. He's definitely going in the deadliest list. Um, oi. Mentally, he is better than, um, he is better than uh, Deathstroke, but physically he's not. So I think mentally that's why he should take the top spot. Next up is Killer Croc. Uh, Arkham Asylum did make him very kind of in the more dangerous villain, so I'm putting him as a kind of dangerous villain. Um, oh, good. He's more effective than Hush is. Um, more effective than Bane. I'll put him again a higher against Deadshot. Hmm. Maybe he should go into the extreme dangers. I would say so, because he's still got that dumbness to him a little bit. Hmm. To be fair, though, I'll come back to him if everything changes. Who's this character? Oh, that's Mad Hatter. Uh, there is a kind of danger to him. Not as much as Hush, though. That's Mr. Freeze. You're kind of in a dangerous spot when you face Freeze. But not the most. I would say he's above Mad Hatter, but... Not... Uh, when it comes, I'm trying to play the most intimidating on it. Cobblepot is a regular villain. I'm sorry, Cobblepot. Um... Who's, I think Harley Quinn's more of a threat than you. Poison Ivy is, I would say, yeah, as a villain, after all, she, she's capable of extreme dangerous things. So I put her, I would say she's more more of a threat than uh, Solomon Grundy, because while Solomon Grundy is a powerful being, she can control the whole, whole majority of the planet, so... I can see her higher up on that regard. But luckily, she turns in the end. But to be fair, majority of the Arkhamverse, she is a villain. Next up is Rachel Ghoul. Uh, he's very. I would say he falls into the category of extreme danger. He's very. He's in the extreme danger right below. Grundy, I would say, since of the whole revival thing. Nigma, uh, I would, I want to say regular villain, but he does have some intel. So I'll put him up behind Hugo. Scarecrow, he's going in the extreme dangerous category. Um, right behind Raish, I would, I, I would assume. For me, anyway, Talia, as a villain? Talia's never done anything sort of villainous in the Arkham, Arkham, so I'm not sure why she's on here, but as a villain, she doesn't really do anything evil, unless you're going to count that whole thing with the Joker team up, but that wasn't really her team, she just offered herself in Batman's place, so it wasn't really... So as a villain, this is literally a waste of space, because she's not even a villain. So I'm not dissing her as a character, I'm just seeing her as a villain. Because this tier list is about villains ranked, and she's not really a villain. So I'm putting her at the bottom because she's not a villain. Which is a waste of space. Two-Face is a average villain. Um, I put him up before Penguin. Um, To be fair, Harley Quinn can get whiny on me at times. So I'm putting her, him above here. 
Oh, yeah, that's fine. And then we've got Zaz, who I believe is a kind of a dangerous villain. Than most of these guys. Now, I do know Hugo Strange knows Batman's identity, but he doesn't really do anything with it, so he, that makes him a regular villain. Then you've got Zaz, uh... I would see Zaz more as more dangerous than the Mad Hatter. And Freeze. Possibly Hush because he affects more people. Uh, why did I put Bane above Hush? I guess because he's stronger. Uh, Deadshot or Zaz? Deadshot can get more targets so I'd say he's right behind Deadshot. Right behind him. Yeah. So that's the list ranked, guys, for the Arkham characters. So let's start from the bottom. We'll go to the top. And up at number one, or the bottom spot, is Talia Al Ghul. Again, she shouldn't be even on here. Uh, they should have replaced her with someone like Firefly or something. There's other Batman villains you could put on here, like Man Bat and Firefly and stuff like that. Heck, Asriel could have been a villain on here because he does have that multiple choice option. So you could have put other characters on here that would have fit in a bit better. But yeah, she is not really a villain so she shouldn't be on here. Moving on to Black Mask, Voice of Space in the Arkhamverse. He gets butchered by the Joker, steals the spotlight away, and then he gets killed by Jason Todd so he doesn't get much to do at all. Cobblepot, he's a no right villain. Um, he's not the best thing in the world, but he then becomes a stereotype throughout the series. Um, so he's fine where it is. Um, Harley Quinn is more awesome than him, though. But maybe that's easy peasy with Harley Quinn, though. Um, however, with the voice change, she does get a great grading at times, and that lowers her spot. Two-Face has potential, but he gets wasted. But he, I can put up with him more than Harley Quinn. Um, but, you know, he's, he's close enough to the Dark Knight version of Two-Face, but not much to make him better than the Dark Knight version. Next up is the Riddler. While he is annoying with his constant talking, his intelligence and smart smarminess never gets old for me. Hugo Strange is above him. While I do, I enjoy his voice and his uh, way of thinking out, uh, intimidating the Batman. Despite the fact that he's just an average man with a bunch of goons, so he finds any way of um, intimidating him. But he doesn't really do anything with it, so that puts him in the regular category, but still at the top spot for figuring out Batman's identity. Um, then we've got Mad Hatter, kind of dangerous. He manages to get Batman and trick him with the cure one time. And then he tricks him again in the past with the Origins game. And then he tr and then he tricks him on a third time in Arkham Knight with the storybook. So he's very... you're in for a... you, you will go down a... he's basically... Batman walks into a trap by the hatter every time. Mr. Freeze, well he's he's more of a sympathetic character than he is a villain. But if you got in his way he would do whatever it takes for his wife. So, you know, Hush is kind of more more of a threat than he is because of what he'll do to Bruce Wayne. But Arkham Knight just kind of ruin it for him and rushes the plot. But there's enough there I'd say that like you didn't expect Hush to strike more than Mr. Freeze did. Uh, Bane is above Hush, physically, obviously, uh, back in the game, uh, in his previous state, you know, he was an intelligent character, sure he got dumb, but he still retained his strength, and a bit of his intelligence to track down the Titan containers, and uh, try to use Batman to, uh, get them for him, but Batman being the world's greatest detective, figured that out, and used him against his own, so they basically twisted the, bat the Bane's pan on himself. Zaz is up next. He is more of a threat because you can never know when he strikes and those creepy phone calls do get kind of grating at times. But, you know, he, he still serves the purpose as being a... He's like the closest villain on the Batman rogues that is the closest to an actual serial killer, which makes him more threatening. Deadshot, he's a better, more dangerous person to be around because, like, you never know when he's going to strike. While Zaz has to walk up to a person to stab him. Literally, um, dead shot. All he has to do is get to a high vantage point, and then boom, you're dead. So I would be more scared of dead shot than I would be of Zaz, even though he gets one shot in the games. So, as it stands, I prefer dead shot in the Arkham than the Zaz fellow. Uh, and up next is Killer Croc. Um, he's 
close to the dangerous category or the, the extreme dangerous category, but you know, he uh, manages to rip Scarecrow's mask off, hurt him severely, gets the jump on you, both in Asylum and City, and then in Night he becomes more monstrous. And uh, you actually feel sorry for the character, so that puts him up. He's basically like the jaws of the Overcom verse, so you never know when he's going to jump up and pounce. Moving on to Scarecrow, who becomes the main villain in Arkham Knight. In Arkham Asylum, he is the trying to pick on Batman's fears. He does a good job of it every time, until Croc comes and takes a bite. And then you feel his mysterious presence in Arkham City building up. And then in Arkham Knight, he releases the Cloud Burst, and you've got that going on. So that does put him up in the extreme dangerous category, because he's the villain who kind of wins. Kind of. Because he actually unmasks Batman. So in a way, he kind of wins. He's the one villain who manages to do the impossible. So that makes him stand out. Then we've got uh, Raish. Um, Raish al Ghul. Um, he is an immortal, so he could easily come back. Um, but to be fair, this character wants to die, but as a villain, how dangerous he is, um, he is more dangerous than the other ones, because, like, he is a villain who could come back in some way of shape or form, so that's why I put him high on this list. The other villain that should be on this list is Clayface, he would have gone in extreme dangerous. Next up is Solomon Grundy, another, like, immortal being who cannot die, so, you know, makes sense why he should be in the extreme dangerous category. He can always come back, and then you've got that creepy reference of the Solomon Grundy um, recorder, the the gra uh, the gramophone was it, or was it record player? I don't know, something like that. Then Poison Ivy, yeah. And while she isn't like an immortal being, but she can control the majority of the planet, so uh, that is something to be extremely dangerous of, as we saw in Arkham Asylum. Uh, the, now for the deadliest villains, of course, which are obviously going to be Deathstroke physically and then Joker mentally, for obvious reasons. But yeah, there's my list of the how to rank the uh, Arkham villains from worst to best. Um, I think some characters should have been on this list, some characters weren't. But as it stands, it was an okay list. So, that's my um, list for the Arkham characters from the Arkham games. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hit the notification bell right corner down below. If you've been staying tuned for DC Superman's custom builds and first ones of content on my channel, join us next time as I'll be trying to upload a LEGO DC Superman's custom builds to see if we can re-spark the, sh the show, the channel again. Um, keep in mind, though, that the videos will take but the processing just take longer now, maybe. So keep that in mind. But it is possible to probably revive the show. So that being said, I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Like always, upcoming Q&A. Also, in the ways you haven't already, make sure to put your questions in. The upcoming Q&A coming on the 30th of April. I'll still keep the old uh, test run live streams up until the LEGO DC Super Runs custom build is up. Then I'll know for sure that it's working properly. So that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Till next time, like always, peace.